Have you ever opened a website and been bombarded with ads or launched an app and tried to find the contents through all of the ads and thought, if only there was a way to block all of these ads? Well, that's what we're going to be doing today, creating an ad blocker using Pi-hole and a Raspberry Pi. What's really cool is that, unlike a traditional ad blocking extension, Pi-hole can block ads and malicious sites for your entire network. And what's more is that this could be set up on a wide variety of environments, as Pi-hole is super compatible. It could run on a Linux system, in a Docker container, or even in a VM. Now, as I mentioned, it blocks website ads, sometimes YouTube ads, it's a bit of a hit or miss really, but it also blocks ads in apps, which is something that most ad blocking extensions don't do. But how does Pi-hole actually work? Well, when you open up, say, a website, your device pings the DNS server that manages ads and your DNS server responds with an IP address to fulfill that request. This way, the ads can be personalized to fit the person that they're targeting. What Pi-hole does is act like a barrier so that when it receives a request that's blacklisted, it doesn't forward that request along to the DNS ad server, but instead blocks the request and responds to the device with an invalid IP address. So your device can't load in any ads in. This is known as a DNS sinkhole. This blacklisting method means that Pi-hole can also block known malicious sites in addition to ads. So let's actually get this thing set up. I'll go over the parts as we go, but the main parts we'll need is a Raspberry Pi, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero, a 16 gigabyte SD card, a 5 volt 2.5 amp micro USB power supply, and a micro B to RJ45 Ethernet adapter. I'm also assuming that you have Raspbian Buster Lite installed. If you don't know how to do it, I've left a little note in the description. With the OS burned on the SD card, you can plug the SD card into a computer and make an extensionless file named SSH under the boot partition so we can access it later with an SSH client. Now you can plug your power supply into your Raspi and also hook it up through the adapter to your router using an ethernet cable. Now we need to search for the Raspi's IP address so we can access it using a secure shell later on. A simple way to do this is to run a program like Angry IP Scanner. Then you can search for the host name Raspberry Pi and take note of its IP address. Now that we've fetched the Raspi's address, we can now assign it a local static IP address. The easiest way to do this would be to Google how to set static IP of insert router model name and follow those instructions. You can also do it on your own by logging into the router's admin page and looking for something labeled with static IP or DHCP and clicking on that and entering the IP address that we fetched earlier with the angry IP scanner. We can now restart our Raspi to allow it to grab its new uh, identity, you could call it. With the Raspi set with a static address, we can now work on accessing it via SSH. I'll be using PuTTY for the SSH client as it's pretty popular, but you can really use any SSH client. To configure it, you can enter the static IP of the Raspi into the SSH in order to connect to it. After you click open, it'll prompt you with a login as and password. For login as, you can use pi, and for the password, you can enter raspberry, no caps. Now our Raspi is successfully connected to a computer via SSH. So the first thing you want to do is set a more secure password so it really is a secure shell. So in the terminal, enter PASSWD. After you click enter, it'll prompt you to enter your current password. Remember, it's Raspberry. And then you can set your own secure password. Believe it or not, we're almost ready to install Pi-hole on this. The only thing we need to do is to update the Pi. Um, to do this, you can run the command sudo apt update, which will inform us if there are any new packages. Then to actually update it, run the command sudo apt upgrade space hyphen y. Now that everything is set up, the static IP address, an SSH client, and a new secure password, we can finally install the star of the show, Pi-hole. Installing it is pretty easy. On the Pi-hole website, they have a one-line install command, which you can run in PuTTY. Eventually, you will be brought to a config screen after a bit of processing. You can actually press enter because all of the recommended settings seem to work fine. Then, when you get to the choose an interface page, you can choose ETH0 if you used an ethernet cable to connect it to your router, which I did. The next screen is where you choose your upstream DNS provider. This is where all the requests will be forwarded if they aren't blacklisted. There are eight of them and I'll be using Google DNS. On the next screen, you select or deselect what preset blacklists you want to use. I'll leave all of them selected as they do a fairly good job of blocking unwanted stuff. After this, it will ask you if you want to block ads over IPv4 and or IPv6, and I just left both of these selected. The next screen will ask you if you want to use your current network settings as a static address, and you can just click yes. 
Then it'll ask you if you want to install the admin interface, the web server, and the logging modes, and all of these can be left at default. Then it'll install all of the packages, and finally, you'll see an installation complete screen where it'll give you your admin web page URL, your IP address for the Pi, and the web page password. You can then paste the IP address into a browser, log in with the given password, and kaboom! You have a working installation of Pi Hole. What's really cool is that the admin panel is super customizable and has a vast array of tools. To make the Pi Hole more effective, at catching YouTube ads, you can just get some of the many scripts off GitHub or some ad list that you can paste into your admin panel. Now this will work only device by device, and what I mean by that is that you have to actually set it up on each device. You could set it up for your entire network, but I actually prefer the device by device way. Now setting up the DNS for an iOS and Android device is pretty straightforward, and I've left a link to a couple of articles that explain how to do it, but for a PC it's a little less straightforward. First go into control panel, then to network and internet network and sharing center, and change adapter settings. If you're connected wirelessly to your router, you can right click on Wi-Fi and click on properties. Under the networking tab, double click internet protocol version 4 and select use the following DNS server addresses. Then enter in the static IP address of a Raspi in the preferred DNS, save the changes, and kaboom! You now have an excellent filter to catch ads in. So you know the drill, if you didn't enjoy this video, you can hit dislike. But if you learned something and enjoyed it, hit like and consider getting subscribed so you don't miss out on more tech videos and projects. Also, comment down below any future Raspberry Pi projects you might want to see. But other than that, I will see you in the next video.